Now, some time ago, Kathy asked me a question. How does Urban Threads create a design like this? And I told Kathy I would look at it. And I have to apologize, Kathy. I forgot. And then I was watching Trev's webinar on Wednesday this week just gone by. And somebody else asked the question and Trevor showed his slant on how they'd done it. He showed a loose density design, was an elephant, I was going to say effluent because that's what we call them in this house, and his sketching. I've been collecting urban threads now for a little while, not many, because I like the way they do their work. And I've got one here and it's called Sky, Sky Glow, I think. And it's about $7. And I want you to look. It's what I call colour washes. Thread washes. Now this is only a JPEG. It's not the design. And they lay the colour washes down. And then they do the design on top. All these colours have already been put in before they draw the bird. Now I've got some more. So I'm going to show you the more. I'll put it on and I've got the wrong hoop. I actually bought it for a bigger hoop. I bought it for my... Um, I'll think of the name in a minute. For Taj, my big machine. Again, colour has been laid down before the drawing. It's all loose density and there's a variety of colours. If I click on the colours, take it back into Digitizer view, that's the first layer of colour. That's the second layer of colour. That's the third layer. Fourth layers. Fifth. sixth and the drawing. Okay, let's just click off window. Again I've got the wrong hoop. Um, I don't think this one will fit either. No, as I say I got it for my big machine. I'll take it into the 1200. 230 by 230. <laughs> yeah, it's meant to fit my 12 inch frame on my Taj. Again, the colours have been laid down first. The drawing is last. First colour. Let's pop it out of thread. Second. Third. Fourth, fifth, the drawing. Let's click off. Ah, that one fits. Now we have another one, a quick gander in simulated stitch. There it is. Add a simulated stitch. Yellow goes first. Then the deep greeny blue turquoise. Then the lime. Then this very pale O'Donnell colour. Then the blue. Then the purple. Then a turquoise, maybe, the beak, and this is the only colour, sorry, there's two colours repeated. This is the beak, and this here. And then we have the drawing, and it's done in mauve. Okay.
Now I've been asked to do a big embroidery. I didn't really want to waste all my thread. <coughs> and it's of the Tall Ships Parade of Sail. And I'd already bought one of these. And I was thinking, how on earth can I do it? And then I remembered this one. Because I was thinking of doing this in a plique. Shading on the sails. That's supposed to be sails and other bits and bobs. The flags. The boat. Top waves. Mid waves. Rest of the waves and the outline drawing. And they're all really loose density. They call these light stitch designs. I thought I had chosen a hoop. I hadn't. Okay, window. Now this is part of their Halloween and at the moment they're on offer for one forty nine, I think it is. One dollar forty nine. And it's all in white. So I'm gonna get rid of the hoop. I've got the DST version because I want it for my big machine. So if I turn this one white and I turn that one white that's the effect. You've got satin stitching in the center You've got weave fill going at different angles to give you the angles of the petals. This one's going straight out. This one's going straight out. So is that one. This one's going across because if it went straight out, it would cause a bit more pull than the satin stitch is causing. This one goes out at a slight angle. This one goes straight out. All the rest is light density stitching. And of course, I can't actually show you object by object because I've altered all the colors. OK, window. But I wanted you to see, oh, this is their bird. This is also all in white. I'm not going to change these. Layers of loose density. Okay. I thought I got more open than that. Oh no. Close that. So this is the type of design that Kathy and the lady who was asking the question during the webinar was on about. And this particular one, I brought that down. I stole the image. Not because we're going to digitize it, but I want you to look at the thumbprints. Now, when I was an art student, we used to make what they called thumbprint animals. And we dip our fingers, messy lot, into ink. And we'd make certain they weren't totally soaked in ink. And then we would simply press them onto the paper. And you got the ridges of your thumb, you know, your fingerprints. If we wanted the thumbprints to go away from us, we then use our other finger pads with ink on and we dop those on and then we would draw the design on top. Then we had to repeat that exercise using washes of paint. And in this instance, it's washes of thread. So that's what we're going to be looking at and 
I'm going to dissect this rose because I think it was this. This is part of a double rose design. Let me go and fetch the double rose design. There it is. And there's the design. Now if you've got a big machine hoop, you can stitch it in one. You can buy the smaller size, but I wanted it for a big hoop. And I know Kathy's got the 10,000. So that's why I split this design in half. So all we're going to dissect is this bit here. So in the next video, we'll start dissecting this design because I want you to see exactly how it's been made up. And before we go there, look at the cross hatching. All very deliberate. It's not accidental. They're not trying to blend color. They have here. And you can see here, they have. They've repeated the same angle and curve. And the same here. But they're not too interested in blending this bit. They want it to stand out. They want you to get the effect that there's layers of paint on top of other layers of paint and a big almost dry paintbrush has been used because if we look just here you can see this sweep matches this sweep but doesn't match that sweep so you get that cross hatching here it's so as you know that the paint underneath is coming through the paint on top because it's almost dry brush technique. Now, those of you who have done painting or still paint will understand exactly what I mean. And then the drawing is to give you the definition of what it is that they've been painting. And that's how Urban Threads makes these designs. OK, I'm going to finish this video here. And in the next video, using the other design that I've already split off, this one, we'll start dissecting the design.